Have you ever wondered what the future holds for our sun? What will happen when it exhausts its fuel? Our very existence hinges on the sun. This fiery ball of gas, a mere 93 million miles away, provides the energy that drives life on Earth. It's the engine of photosynthesis, the heart of our solar system, our beacon in the vast darkness of space. But like all things in the cosmos, our sun is subject to the laws of stellar evolution. It has a life cycle, a beginning, a middle, and an end. The sun, just like us, is living on borrowed time. It was born roughly four and a half billion years ago in the fiery heart of a molecular cloud. Since then, it's been burning hydrogen, fusing it into helium in a process known as nuclear fusion. This process generates an enormous amount of energy, which powers the sun and provides the heat and light that sustain life on Earth. But the sun won't burn forever. It's currently middle-aged in a phase known as the main sequence. When it exhausts its hydrogen fuel, it will begin to undergo dramatic changes. In about five billion years, our sun will undergo a dramatic transformation, marking the end of its life as we know it. Imagine our sun, but much bigger and redder. That's what it will look like in its red giant phase. Our familiar life-giving sun will undergo a dramatic transformation as it enters this phase of its life cycle some five billion years from now. At this point, the sun will have exhausted its primary fuel source, hydrogen. As a result, the process of nuclear fusion, which has been the sun's powerhouse for billions of years, will cease in the core. But don't worry, our sun won't go quietly into the night. Instead, it will start burning helium, causing it to expand. Now, when we say expand, we're not talking about a little bit of extra weight around the waist. No, we're talking about a truly colossal expansion. Picture the sun ballooning to such an extent that it engulfs the inner planets of the solar system, including our Earth. That's right, our sun's outer layers will reach out to the present-day orbit of Mars. The implications of this phase for Earth and the rest of the solar system are, as you might expect, quite significant. The surface of our planet will be heated to such a degree that it will resemble a fiery inferno, rendering it completely uninhabitable. Meanwhile, the outer solar system will be thrown into disarray as the sun's gravitational pull weakens, causing planets to shift in their orbits. But it's not all doom and gloom. This red giant phase, although destructive, is a necessary step in the sun's evolution. It's during this phase that the sun will manufacture the heavier elements, such as carbon and oxygen, that are essential for life as we know it. So even as our sun swells and rages, it continues to create and disperse the raw materials that may one day lead to life on other planets. It's a reminder that even in its death throes, a star's life cycle is intricately connected to the birth and evolution of life in the universe. After about two billion years, the sun will shed its outer layers, leading to a spectacular celestial event. But that, dear listeners, is a story for another time. For now, let's marvel at the power and majesty of our sun, a true celestial titan in its red giant phase. As the sun sheds its outer layers, it will create a beautiful glowing shell of gas, a planetary nebula. Now that's a sight to behold, isn't it? But what exactly is a planetary nebula and how does it form? Well, let's imagine for a moment. The sun, having exhausted its hydrogen fuel, has swollen into a red giant. It's now ready to enter the next phase of its life. As it cools and contracts, the outer layers of the sun are gently pushed out into space. This process forms a nebulous cloud of ionized gas around the dying star, which we lovingly refer to as a planetary nebula. The name might be a little misleading though, as these stunning formations have nothing to do with planets. It's a holdover from early telescopic observations when astronomers mistook these distant glowing objects for the disks of distant planets. Now, there are some truly breathtaking examples of planetary nebulae in our universe. Consider the Ring Nebula, aptly named for its distinctive circular appearance, or the Dumbbell Nebula, which, as you might guess, bears an uncanny resemblance to a weightlifter's dumbbell. These celestial spectacles are just a tiny sample of the variety and beauty that planetary nebulae have to offer. So, what can we expect from our sun's planetary nebula? Well, that's a tough question. The shape and appearance of a planetary nebula depend on a myriad of factors, including the mass of the star, its rotation, and the presence of companion stars. Given these variables, it's challenging to predict what our sun's planetary nebula will look like, but one thing's for sure, it will be a sight of cosmic splendor, a last hurrah from our sun before it enters its final stage of life. It's a little bittersweet, isn't it? 
This brilliant display will be our sun's swan song, a testament to the ebb and flow of stellar life. It's a reminder of the grandeur of the cosmos, a spectacle of natural beauty that we, unfortunately, won't be around to witness. Once the planetary nebula phase is over, the sun will enter its final stage of life. And that, dear listeners, is a tale for another time. After the grandeur of the planetary nebula phase, the sun will become a white dwarf, a small, dense, and hot stellar remnant. Imagine something as massive as the sun, compressed into a sphere roughly the size of Earth. That's a white dwarf for you. These celestial objects are incredibly dense, with a teaspoon of white dwarf matter weighing as much as an elephant. They're white hot, with surface temperatures reaching up to 100,000 degrees Celsius. That's hotter than the surface of our present-day sun. But even the most brilliant stars fade away. Over billions of years, our sun in its white dwarf phase will slowly cool down. As it cools, it will also fade, its once brilliant white light dimming to red, then to black. This cooling process is incredibly slow, taking longer than the current age of the universe. So, for all practical purposes, a white dwarf can be considered an eternal celestial object. Now, let's delve deeper into the cosmos and explore the theoretical endpoint of a white dwarf's cooling process, the black dwarf. As the name suggests, a black dwarf is a cooled white dwarf that no longer emits significant heat or light. However, it's important to note that no black dwarves exist in the universe yet. The universe simply isn't old enough for a white dwarf to have cooled into a black dwarf. While it's a long way off, understanding the sun's transformation gives us a glimpse into the fascinating journey of stars and the inevitable cycle of cosmic life and death. It's a reminder of the transient nature of existence, even on a cosmic scale. It also underscores our place in the universe as beings capable of understanding these profound processes. So, the next time you gaze up at the stars, remember the incredible journey each one is on from luminous beginnings to their quiet but equally majestic ends.